Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you on behalf of a leader here on this conference, <coughs> this wonderful room here. And I can assure you, it's a great experience for me to look in this hall, see so many, many friends here, and I think you're also the best head of the library scene in Europe. It's really a great moment to welcome you. But first of all, I wish to express my warm, my warm thanks to all those who supported and made this conference possible. My thanks go to Jens Thurhauge, who extended the invitation to Copenhagen, and our hosts, the Danish Library Umbrella, and especially the Danish Library Association, without whose support a leader and NATO would not have managed to organize this conference. This conference is a very special one. Let me mention the pleasant aspects first. We are celebrating the 10th birthday of NATO and the 20th birthday of a leader. Especially in the last five years, as Maria Antonia Carato mentioned already, we succeeded in strengthening our cooperation. I'm very pleased about that because I think it is enormous important that library associations and national authorities join to face the challenges of the future and develop solutions together. During the last 20 years, a leader has accomplished a lot, especially in the era of intellectual property rights. Lobbying for European libraries is one of the main goals of a leader, which will perform at various levels. It is essentially the whole rationale for the establishment of our organization. Establishing trust through the qualities of our actions, representing the interests of European libraries, and utilizing our networks effectively are the qualities that define our work. Not every initiative was crowned by instant success but by preserving, we have succeeded in strengthening the position of all European libraries in effecting positive changes for the libraries and their users in every copyright directive since the founding of a leader. There is no doubt in my mind that without a leader, copyright legislation in Europe would be more restrictive, less user-friendly and provide less scope for libraries to promote and give access to knowledge and information. We have already achieved a lot, but we still have much more work ahead of us. I definitely will not conceal that the current situation is a critical one. In my opinion, the two most important challenges for all libraries are the transformation of the media and information market and the financial crisis. You may be surprised that I regard the financial crisis as less threatening than the development on the media information market. Although we are facing big budget cuts in many countries of Europe and we face also a closing of many libraries, I'm confident that we will succeed in developing a positive and convincing vision for libraries of the future and that we will persuade the politicians that libraries are a vital ingredient in counteracting some of the most demoralizing aspects of the current financial crisis, and we will convince them that public investment in libraries shows a sense of civic responsibility. I'm much more worried about the development <coughs> in the media and information market, which is of essential importance for us. Whoever speaks about the future moves on uncertain terrain. As a famous quote says, it's hard to predict, uh, it's hard to make predictions, especially about the future. May I remind you that 15 years ago, among futurologists, it was chic to predict the death of libraries. The end of books was proclaimed, and libraries with the large stocks of books were considered to be symbols of yesterday's world, whose time was up. In the light of the new information and communication technologies, libraries were said to, to be no longer up to date. But now, 15 years later, libraries are more vital than ever. 
the new information and communication technologies have not given the death blow to the libraries, but on the contrary have stimulated and vitalized them tremendously. The result is a new concept of philosophy of libraries that uses new technologies as never before and focuses in its work on the users, his wants and needs. The actual work of librarians and the function of libraries have changed drastically over the last 15 years. We librarians have the technology and the ability to make a decisive contribution to overcome the digital divide and to create a European knowledge area. We have also the will. But strangely enough, the laws in Europe restrain us from operating efficiently. Copyright legislation in Europe lags behind and is still primarily adapted to the concept of a library as a place where citizens may borrow copies of printed books. Libraries still buy printed books and journals, but since the end of the 1990s, scientific journals are primarily published in electronic formats and distributed in packages compiled either by the publishers or by distributing agencies. And now, at an increasing pace, we see the same development with books and other types of works. Today, most libraries can now be labeled as being hybrid. On the same hand, offering materials for loan, which are published as individual items like copies of books, and on the other hand, via the internet, offering access to books, journal articles, music and film, which are published electronically in databases. For a long time, this development appeared to concern mainly or almost entirely academic libraries with their services for the scientific community, a hugely important but relatively small group in our society. But in recent years, the media market in the field of e-books has moved dramatically. This development concerns not only a small group now, but the whole society. For years, the discussion about e-books moved slowly. In 2010, it gained momentum. For libraries, this development means new challenges and chances. The vision of a library without walls, a library that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week for all citizens of Europe, not only in the biggest cities, but also in the smallest villages and remotest valleys, can be realized. What we need are intelligent concepts, a reasonable financing model, and an adaption of copyright law. The transition of publishing literary and artistic works on tangible media to e-publishing also changes the rules by which libraries have so far operated. How libraries meet this challenge will decide whether and how libraries in the future will be able to fulfill their objectives to make a broad spectrum of published works available to the general public. In my view, this is the crucial question for the future of libraries. Let me be quite clear. It's our question of survival. All works made available by the library are protected by copyright, and copyright legislation reg regulates how libraries may use the material they acquire. With the introduction of electronic publishing, the legal basis for the library's activities changes dramatically. The current legal framework hinders libraries from fulfilling essential services for our society in the digital area, especially regarding the development of the e-book market. What's the point? First, because the exhaustion of distribution rights after the first sale, a library may buy published works, for example, books from a bookseller, and use the copies for lending to the library's platforms. The library's actions do not interfere with the rights of the author. In consequence, the library decides in accordance with the acquisition policy what books to buy and use for public lending. On the other hand, because e-lending is a service, the concept of exhaustion does not apply, and the library can only acquire the digital object, the book or e-journal, by entering into a license agreement with the author or other right holders. The right holders are free to decide whether 
that wants to give access to a specific work and to decide on the terms of such access. The consequence of this is that the acquisition policy may be decided by the publishers and not by the library. This is not a hypothetical danger. Libraries have actually experienced instances of publishers refusing to include certain titles of e-books, removing certain titles from the subscription packages in order only to sell the books to individual private customers and prescribing the terms to access. We are monitoring with concern the development of the biggest e-book market, the e-book market in the USA. And uh, we see that libraries having troubles in the USA getting e-books from the largest publishing companies. These publishers are adding restrictions and price increases are simply not selling e-books to libraries to all. The big six book, uh, the, the big six publishers in the USA are extremely reluctant to work together with libraries. Penguin recently added e-book lending and e-book lending to public libraries. HarperCollins has a 26 checkout limit to each e-book and then the library has to buy it again. Random House allows un unrestricted access to e-books but recently raised prices in some cases for libraries, tripling them. And three of the big publishers, the biggest publishers of the USA, don't sell e-books to libraries at all. We don't want to have the same in Europe. It is a significant, <coughs> in our view, an unacceptable change that the acquisition policies of libraries may be decided by the publishers and that free access for the European citizens is decided by the publishers. The challenge is to find solutions to this problem. Politicians are unaware of the changed balance of power or at least they are unaware of the guarantees provided by the printed systems that have vanished in the e-system. If you want to have attractive, vital libraries of the future and not museums of books, we have to do everything to change the situation. This is why we have organized this conference here in Copenhagen. In our annual council meeting, yesterday, a leader decided that paper European libraries and the challenges of e-publishing that summarizes the current situation and suggests first, for a short term, a memorandum of understanding with the Federation of European Publishers for fair licensing models, and on the long term, an updating of the copyright regime for e-books e-lending and e-content in order to enable libraries to continue to perform their services for all European citizens. A pleader invites the Federation of European Publishers to enter into a dialogue about such a memorandum of understanding for fair licensing models. I emphasize explicitly that libraries have utmost respect for the achievements of writers. This is the reason why we pursue our profession. We also are in favor of fair remuneration for lending, but we want, a, we want fair conditions, a partnership at eye level, otherwise it will not be a partnership. The basic principle regarding exceptions and limitations to authors' rights is that the exceptions do not interfere with the right holders' commercial exploitation of the works. Okay, we agree to them. The challenge, therefore, for libraries and publishers in the age of electronic publication is to find ways and means as to how libraries may fulfill their objectives without compromising the commercial interests of the authors and publishers. A pleader is willing to start such a dialogue with the publishers and right holders here in Copenhagen and to find sensible solution for us all. We want to create a win-win situation. We will start this afternoon to work out a campaign that will inform all libraries in Europe on the current unacceptable state and we will include activities to raise awareness of politicians and the public in order to change the situation. 
We want to lay the foundation for fair agreements between rights holders, publishers and libraries for the good of the European citizens here in Copenhagen. A democracy can only exist with well-informed citizens. Let us ensure this also in the 21st century with our libraries. We should start with many things.